Look at Dosey Dixon's contribution, second generation Caribbean. She asked a very fascinating question, uh, which again, she didn't fully answer, but again, left open that when you look at most of the Caribbean first generation writing, it was male dominated. And she was reflecting that it would be interesting to hear the voices of the women uh, who are Caribbean are reflecting into that space. And I thought that is a very serious thought there, uh, which a question I haven't really thought about, to be honest. Uh, and so it was interesting to uh, reflect on that. But also she asked another wider question that African Caribbean Pentecostals are one of the major contributors to world Christianity in the European context. But yet, when you look at most of the published works around world Christianity, somehow it's, their voices are missing. And so she asked the question, why? And, and so she feels that those voices are missing, one, because of a kind of a lack of understanding between African Caribbeans and Africans. Uh, on the one hand, uh, that is, uh, oftentimes people are happy to maybe include Africans, uh, people, those of us who are from continental Africa, uh, in a book contribution. But I think once we have those voices, maybe we don't need African and Caribbean, African Caribbean voices. So almost like a substitute to say, well, if you are Africans, uh, well, then you can also speak for African Caribbeans. Whereas she's saying that shouldn't be the case. That yet, yes, it's true. African Caribbeans have their roots from Africa, but because of the whole slavery uh, journey and discourse, there is now something we call African Caribbeans. And while there is a shared root in an ancestry in Africa, African Caribbeans are still distinct from Africans uh, and have a contribution which is unique 